Been catching up with Michael Winlow this morning from Emeria. Michael, morning. Good morning, Andrew. Look, firstly, as far as uh, your clinical services, you're seeing a, a good increase in demand. Bring us up to speed with how things are going. Yeah, we have. As the, our followers would have seen in the quarterly report, we've seen an increase in visit activity in the MPAC Centre. That's our dedicated specialist treatment facility we put next door to our psychological trauma treatment centre uh, back in April. Uh, and we've seen an increasing uh, set, set of activity there in terms of uh, patient treatments and visits, which means uh, that we're also getting uh, more data with those patients as well. And you've received a, an endorsement for your psilocybin-assisted therapy. Yeah, so as people may be aware, the, we've only uh, been offering the MDMA-assisted therapy program and evaluating that. Uh, we were one of the first centres to get off the ground with that program after the law change. Uh, we've been going for over a year with that program, uh, and that's been what's driving the growth. And now we're adding uh, the next uh, treatment arm into that program, which is a psilocybin-assisted therapy program for treatment-resistant depression. Hmm. Just remind us, Michael, very few centres deliver the type of therapy you're offering. That's right. What, what we're providing is a really uh, complicated uh, treatment program. It requires the oversight of a specialist a psychiatrist who's been specially authorised by the TGA. It needs the support of a number of local uh, clinical psychologists as well uh, to be with, those, with our patients under treatment. Uh, you need access to special medications, which require special licensing, and a unique space to do this treatment as well. The setting uh, is really, really important. And so, not surprisingly, very few groups have actually been able to get this off the ground. We're one of the few uh, active services nationally, which means one of the few services actively globally are able to provide these treatments. And of course, we're seizing that opportunity and trying to learn what works best for our patients. And that's all part of our intellectual property uh, portfolio. And of course, offering much needed treatments. Uh, remind us, Michael, about the, the revenue model here. Yeah, so right now, uh, tr treatments are paying, uh, sorry, power patients are paying uh, out of pocket for this. And that's a considerable expense given the time involved from the therapy side. Uh, but we expect payers uh, to start engaging uh, very, very soon. We are in conversations with a few. We know they're contemplating hospital substitution programs, which is uh, really, really encouraging. And I think, you know, we really need a new change in mental health. We can't keep doing the old things, again, expecting different results. Hospitalization is a very costly and expensive endeavor you know, personally for the patient, but also for those third party payers as well. So they're looking for alternatives, looking for, you know, better, more effective treatments. I believe this has a huge potential uh, to fill that, uh, that opportunity. And uh, we look forward to bringing that, you know, this service in, to patients nationally. And as far as uh, drug development, Michael, you've announced here formal commercial terms have been agreed uh, as far as your partnership with the University of Western Australia for mental health and neurology. That's right. So uh, we've been working with the University of Western Australia for over three years on looking at novel forms of MDMA inspired compounds, which are, is like MDMA as a, as a scaffold. We're making changes to that to get different kinds of uh, selectivity uh, of that drug. We think these library uh, of candidates have a huge potential across a range of neuropsychiatric and neuro neurological conditions. Uh, and we've got two lead candidates now. We've just we recently won a, a massive Western Australia grant uh, with the University of Western Australia as well, nearly $500,000 uh, to advance that program. And finally, come up now we've agreed to commercial terms, which allows both of us to pursue uh, and uh, unlock the commercial potential uh, of this first family of assets. And to tell us a bit more about the, the markets which you're looking to address here. Yes, yeah, so for these two candidates, very close to home, uh, clearly in mental health, we're looking to make an adjunct for psychotherapy for PTSD. MDMA-assisted therapy is the primary treatment uh, at the moment uh, in the drug-assisted therapy space for PTSD. Uh, it, it's a long-acting medication, and the sessions can last uh, quite a while. We're looking to uh, tune the selectivity of this medication to get more of the effects we want, less of the unwanted side effects, and hopefully shorten the treatment cycle as well. Uh, and the other class of drugs is quite interesting. It's an adjunct for Parkinson's therapy. Uh, now that might see, seem surprising, but we're working on the main uh, neurotransmitters. There are dopamine in this case, uh, and we believe we can, we've got a drug from the early signs that may really improve the symptoms of Parkinson's treatment. Well, Michael, is there much you can tell us as far as what you're working on now and news from Ameria between now and the end of the year? 
Yeah, the big things to look out for really is the progress on those payer engagement conversations with third party payers. That's going to allow us to provide this treatment to more patients and uh, have greater impact. Uh, and then we'll further some advancements in our drug development uh, progress as well. Good to see you, Michael. Thanks very much. Thanks, Andrew. Cheers.